Hello everyone, I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library and I'm here with your State Librarian Jenny Sapp for another website chat. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get going. I've got a couple things to start. Just a reminder that we do record all of the website chats and you can find them on the State Library's Vimeo channel. And this is, although this is a link and you can't actually click on it from your recording, but uh, it's pretty easy to find. You can go to the State Library and you can search in Vimeo for it. You can email me or anyone at the State Library, ask for the link, and definitely recommend that you bookmark our channel on Vimeo. And then you'll be able to easily find all of our recordings. We also uh, post our recordings to YouTube. And we, they're not as well organized in YouTube, and but they are captioned. So there is there are closed captions that YouTube creates automatically. And so if you prefer to watch your videos with captions, uh, you can always find the link for every video. If you go to the Vimeo channel, you can find the link for that video on the YouTube channel. A little bit easier to find it that way. I do want to take a moment here to bring you up to date on some of the training activities we have planned for you in the upcoming months. So just put this on your radar. Some things are happening sooner than later. Coming up af right after the Montana Library Association Conference, we're planning a day-long training at the Butte Public Library on the 24th of April. And then right now, you can be applying for the Summer Leadership Institute, which will be held at the Rising Wolf Ranch in East Glacier Park in June, uh, June 18th through the 21st. So applications are due April 1st, and we're looking for emerging leaders in the library world in Montana and you can apply by logging into Aspen if you need any help with that. Be sure to be in contact with me or any of your state library staff will be willing to help you with getting your application into Aspen. And I should mention that the uh, uh, Summer Leadership Institute actually starts in East Glacier Park at Rising Wolf Ranch at a retreat, a four-day retreat. And we have three facilitators that are planning that retreat for you. But then it also continues for about nine months afterwards with follow-up webinars and meetings and lots of support for our leaders as they really expand their leadership capacity. So that's the, that's something we offer uh, every other year from your state library. No charge to attend that or any of our trainings, actually. And then we do have MSL workshops. It's a one-day workshop. Uh, we have one planned for Bozeman on the 24th of July. That's the day after the Montana Library Association School Library Division Retreat, which is held at Montana State University. So we'll be at Bozeman Public Library the next day because we've hired a presenter on media literacy. So we're going to do a three-hour introduction to media literacy. Dr. Faith Rogo is coming from Binghamton, New York to present that. Um, and she will be uh, uh, presenting um, just kind of a really great introduction for librarians. Faith is a, um, it was the founding president of the National Association for Media Literacy Education. And we're real excited to have her. We're also going to have a session on social work in the library. I'm just finalizing details with the presenter who's coming up from Georgetown, Texas. And we are, have the National Network for Libraries of Medicine that's going to be doing their Beyond an Apple a Day uh, workshop. So that's another three-hour session. And your shared catalog staff is putting together three hours of training as well. So that'll be a really full agenda in Bozeman. We don't have the program set up for Sydney yet, but do make a note if that's a location you um, that's easier for you to get to. We'll be out at the Sydney Public Library in September. And then the Ready to Read Rendezvous is coming up in September in Helena. Just make a note of that. There'll be more information about that soon. And then we're also planning, along with our colleagues at the Wyoming State Library, a regional ripple. That's Research in Public Libraries. That's a multi-day, really intense training on how to do research and interpret it and use it to make decisions at your library. And that's going to be with our friends at the Billings Public Library coming up in October. So make a note of that. That's our training agenda. Jenny, on to you. 
thanks, Joe, and thanks, everybody, for joining me. It's uh, nice to have you with us today. Uh, as you can see from the agenda, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the legislature, and then I have a few other updates to share. Um, of course, it's a, a busy time for us here with the legislative session, and I want to give a quick shout out to John Finn, the Government Affairs Direct Chair from the uh, Library Association Government Affairs Committee, and of course the Director of the Lewis and Clark Library. He's doing a great job uh, working with Nanette Gilbertson, the MLA lobbyist, to keep a watchful eye on any kind of legislation that libraries should be aware of and might want to have a voice in, and it's always a pleasure to work with them. Um, First of all, from a state library perspective, our, our primary interest this year is our budget. The state library is involved with a couple of other pieces of legislation uh, around uh, digital library services and GIS services, but our, our primary concern is the state library budget. Uh, if you've attended some of these other website chats or you've seen my legislative updates via Wired, you know that things are, are looking pretty good at this point for the state library. Uh, revenues continue to, to be steady with the state. Uh, they're not, not significant increases, not significant decreases, just sort of pretty steady, uh, and so uh, the legislature has been uh, willing to maintain budgets. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of significant growth in programs, but some um, uh, stability, which is encouraging. Um, we had a really, really positive budget hearing with the Education Budget Subcommittee back in February, and they expressed really sincere concern over the budget cuts that the State Library faced in 2017, and a strong desire to help the State Library find ways to diversify the funding that we receive. Uh, our funding is largely made up of state general fund, the coal severance tax monies that we receive. We have federal funds that support library development and then a special revenue account that um, collects monies from local governments to help support some of the GIS work, but not all of it. And with the decline in general fund, as most of you know, the state library took a pretty severe budget cut in 2017. Uh, the Budget Subcommittee did vote to restore some of those funds. Everything that was proposed by the governor at this point has been rest restored to our budget. Uh, but the intent of the Legislative Budget Subcommittee is that we look for alternative sources of funding to get the State Library off of its reliance, or at least partially off its reliance, on the State General Fund so that our services in the future are not subject to the kinds of volatility that we saw over the past couple of years. So at this point, as I said, the Budget Subcommittee uh, adopted uh, our present law adjustments to help us restore some of the FTE that we lost in 2017. And House Appropriations upheld that addition to our budget. So uh, at this point, as long as there are no other changes uh, when the session concludes, our budget will include those funds. We have heard from other legislators that, that they would are looking for opportunities to restore some additional amounts to the State Library, and so we're working with them. Uh, at this point, we're, we're not necessarily getting our hopes up, but uh, are working with those legislators to give them the information they need. And then um, the legislature is proposing a long-term strategy to help us figure out how to diversify our revenue. There is a, a piece of legislation working its way through the session. It's House Bill 633, and it creates a state special revenue account that would be the account that would hold these different sources of revenue as they come in to help fund state library services. And then the legislation also would require the Legislative Finance Committee during the interim to study what kinds of opportunities exist for those different sources of revenue. Uh, and there have been a number of different ideas proposed. Uh, we know, for example, that there are numerous state functions that rely on the state library's data. Uh, anything that has to do with land ownership information would rely on state library data. and 
one of the things we'll argue for is that if there's a cost recovery model for those systems, that the state library might receive a portion of that cost recovery to help fund the data. That's just one example of many that I think the LFC might study during the interim. And then in the next legislative session, they uh, could take action to put some of those options into law. So again, it's a, a long-term strategy, but one that seems to be getting really good support from the legislature thus far. So where we are in the session itself, Transmittal was a couple of weeks ago. Transmittal is considered the midway point in the session. Any general policy bills that don't have revenue or appropriations tied to them have to have been con concluded their work in one chamber and transmitted to the other chamber uh, by March 1st in order for them to continue through the legislative process. If they miss that deadline, for example, they were never introduced or acted on in a committee or a committee tabled the bills, they're considered dead at this point. Any bills that contain an appropriation or suggest a new source of revenue have a little bit longer to work their way through the legislative process. So uh, the bill that I just mentioned, House Bill 633, uh, is a, an appropriations bill. And so it has until around uh, April 1st to transmit. It has made its way uh, out of House appropriations. It will be heard on the House floor today for second reading. Uh, assuming it passes that vote, it'll have one more vote on the House floor and then transmit to the Senate. So that's where we are in House Bill 633. House Bill 2, the General State Budget Bill, has also been heard by House Appropriations. It will have its uh, hearing on the House floor this next Tuesday, March 19th. Uh, and again, we're not anticipating any changes to our budget on the 19th, but we'll be watching for that. Then that bill, too, will transmit to the Senate, and we'll have hearings in the Senate Finance and Claims Committee. Those are all opportunities for uh, additional funds, perhaps, to make their way into the state library budget. Again, we're, we're not necessarily hoping for that, but uh, there could be some opportunity. I'm going to pause there and ask if there's any questions about the state library budget. And I unmuted, excuse me, I've ever unmuted everyone's microphone so you can just jump in. As I mentioned, we've been working closely with the Montana Library Association on other pieces of legislation that either align with library values or might have some implications for libraries. Uh, uh, the first one, House Bill, I think it was 354 or 7, now the number is escaping me, um, was a bill that would have fined libraries that had any material or uh, through public access computers people were accessing pornography. The uh, Library Association opposed that bill on the grounds that uh, one, pornography is not illegal, it's uh, protected under the First Amendment, and more importantly, that uh, local library boards have the authority to determine what is in their collections according to their collection development policies, and MLA felt that that bill challenged the authority of local library boards. Ultimately, that bill was tabled. There's another bill that was heard earlier this week that would provide uh, more legal uh, definition to service animals and a little bit more uh, guidance for how entities uh, help to manage service animals in their uh, businesses or in their, their public offices. And so MLA was also in attendance. Tracy Cook represented the State Library as an informational witness at that hearing because we know uh, it can be challenging for libraries to work with patrons who have service animals because the, the law right now is, is fairly vague. And so, Tracy, I don't know if you have an update on the status of that particular bill. Hi, Jenny. No, 
I do not at this time. It may just be sitting there. Yes, I think so. It was fairly controversial, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, MLA and Tracy have also met with Senator Bryce Bennett about the possibility of a net neutrality bill that he is considering carrying. The Montana Library Association passed a resolution last year in support of net neutrality, and so MLA met with the senator to let them know that net neutrality is something that the association supports and to offer their assistance and guidance in crafting legislation that could perhaps then be in line with MLA's interest as well. That bill has not been introduced at this point. And then the other thing with regard to the session that I wanted to mention is the per capita per square mile state aid. Uh, and most of you know that legislation was passed last session to extend the sunset date for state aid to 2023, but then in the budget cuts the funding itself was swept from the bill, so it was unfunded. Uh, again, that law exists on the books. It exists until 2023 when it needs to be reauthorized. And as long as nothing changes in that law this session, those funds will be restored in FY 2020 this coming July. So uh, MLA's uh, approach to this law this session has been to just be very quiet about it, try to keep it under the radar. And so far, that seems to be a successful approach. I haven't heard any discussion or whispers of discussion about state aid. Uh, again, as long as uh, we make it through probably that April 1st deadline without anybody raising that particular piece of law, I think we should probably be in the clear uh, and can have some assurance that libraries will again see that funding uh, in FY 2020. I, th I think it's very unlikely that anything would happen at this point, but that's been the strategy for that, that law and that legislation this session. Again, I'm going to pause and ask if there's any questions, anything you might be hearing in the news that you have questions about with regard to the legislature, anything you've maybe seen on Wired that I haven't addressed that you might be curious about, or anything you want me to clarify. There's nothing in the chat box, and everybody's mics are available. They can unmute, and it looks like everybody has themselves muted. But feel free to jump in. You're going to be seeing MLA reach out. Uh, it'll probably be in the next two weeks when the State Library's budget will be heard before Senate Finance. Uh, if you have legislators who sit on that committee, in particular the Government Affairs Committee representatives for your areas may be reaching out to you asking you to contact those legislators in support of the State Library's budget. And we certainly appreciate any support and communication that you might have with your own local legislators. Okay, I'm going to move on to a couple of other topics that I wanted to share with you. Uh, Tracy and I have been discussing and sharing emails today about uh, sort of a snafu that we have discovered with the upcoming certification of public library standards. Uh, again, we'll open the, that, the standard certification process on May 1st. And one of the standards requires libraries and library boards to evaluate their services using the annual report of public library statistics. You guys, of course, all uh, public libraries submit public library statistics in the fall, and then we here at the State Library compile those statistics and submit most of them to uh, our federal counterpart, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, uh, for federal reporting requirements. And then for many, many years, we, re we compiled those uh, into, uh, for a while it was a print book, now most of those reports are available online. 
um, but due to some of the budget cuts, we've lost the staff capacity to prepare that annual report and uh, update those reporting tool tools through our website. And so it's come to our attention that we can't require you to complete that standard if we are not doing our part to make that report available to you. So we want to make libraries aware of this uh, issue as soon as possible. Our intent is to not hold libraries accountable to this standard and we'll be working with uh, our attorney and uh, our State Library Commission if necessary to go through whatever kind of legal process we might need to go through to make sure that we can suspend that public library standard for this year, assuming that all goes as anticipated uh, when it comes to actually completing your public library standards on that certification form, libraries would be given the option of not applicable uh, and there would be no penalty for not meeting that standard and there certainly wouldn't uh, need to be a, a, de a deferral plan or anything like that. So uh, wanted to make you all aware of the fact that we know that there's going to be an issue with this standard. We're looking into it and we'll have a resolution uh, by the time the certification program opens in May. And we do have a comment in the chat box or question. Um, and it is, what date is in the fall is this to be submitted? So what's the, what's the, the usual deadline for that? Jennifer, the, the public library standards, uh, the, the process to certify them will open on May 1st. And those need to be submitted by, is it July 1st, Tracy, or July 31st? I can't remember, but it's in the summer. Actually, it's like July 26th. It's kind of in, an odd date. In July. The, mm -hmm. the public library statistics are submitted in November, and that's for uh, the fiscal year that you're, we're in right now. That submission process for the statistics will open up. Usually it's in September and closes in November. Is that about right? Yes, that is correct. In fact, we try to open it up in August so people have a few months. Great. Good question, Jennifer. Yeah, and those are two different things. So you report on the standards versus your statistics. So right, exactly. The statistics we we collect them here. There, there's a lot of good information there for us. But we are required to submit those to the Institute of Museum and Library Services. The standards are uh, a public library's certification that they're meeting those standards for essential library services that are in Montana uh, administrative rules. And in order to receive your uh, per capita per square mile state aid funding, uh, libraries are required to meet those standards. So two different reporting requirements. Any questions about the, the issue we're finding with the, that particular standard? And of course, as we get close to that process, if you do have any questions, be sure and let myself or Tracy or your consultants know. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we have concluded our public awareness campaign, the Information Powers Montana. Uh, I, I should say what we have concluded is the contract with Bannock Communications. Um, they were a great partner out of Great Falls, and they developed just an amazing amount of really great content from uh, template letters to the editor to talking points to uh, just a wonderful selection of YouTube videos. If you haven't been aware of the campaign, the campaign really focused on how libraries support economic and workforce development. And so the videos are videos of um, librarians, but also authors and people within the bu business community speaking about how they rely on libraries and library information to support economic development. Uh, while we have com completed the contract with Bannock, all of that content remains available through the Montana Library Association website, so mtlib.org. If, if you just go to their home page, you'll see a link to the Information Powers Montana campaign information. Uh, there's 
downloadable logos, there's banners, there's posters, all of that great video content that you can use. Use the talking points. Uh, it, it's, it's fair game for anybody to make use of. And we've heard some great stories from people who've used those talking points in their communications with their communities. So uh, while we won't be updating that content, at least in the near future, it is still certainly available for you to use. We'll still be sharing a lot of that content via social media, and we encourage you to do so as well. And then um, the, well, almost the last topic I wanted to talk about, but something I wanted to spend just a little bit of time on is a draft resolution that the State Library Commission is currently considering. And I dropped a link to the resolution in the chat box. And Joe, I'm wondering if you might just bring it up for me. All right, thank you very much. Um, like I said, I, I dropped the link to this document in the chat box. You can go uh, online and check it out yourself, or it's also available from the State Library Commission meeting materials from their February meeting where this draft resolution was first proposed. This resolution came about uh, for a, a number of reasons. Um, in 2016, the State Library went through a strategic planning process, and during that process, we adopted a new mission statement. Uh, and that mission statement is that the State Library helps all um, communities thrive through excellent library resources and services. And over the past couple of years, we have uh, come to the conclusion that uh, that resolution itself was built on an assumption of some shared values. And uh, through discussions about the work of the State Library and in discussions with all of you, we realized that it, um, we were probably ahead of ourselves in assuming that uh, we have a even if we uh, profess to share the same values, we haven't clearly articulated what they are, and so uh, we may not necessarily be communicating about the same kinds of things. And so really what this resolution is, is a value proposition that we can then use as a way to benchmark library services in the state of Montana. Um, but it's, of course, it's not appropriate for the state library itself to propose that value proposition. This really is something that should be shared amongst the library community. Um, when we start talking about what it means to implement a statewide library card or a useful information infrastructure that supports this kind of uh, resolution, we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And so Commissioner Bruce Newell took it upon himself to draft this resolution. Uh, it's had an initial discussion amongst the State Library Commission, and we're in a public comment period right now where we're seeking feedback from the library community about this resolution. Uh, as I said, when we talk with our partners, when we talk with all of you, and we talk about uh, fair access and sufficient library services, we want to make sure that we all have a shared understanding of what that means. Uh, and I think when we say that in a broad way, that all Montanans should have access to sufficient library services, it's really easy to say yes. But when um, the, we, we sort of roll up our sleeves and get to work. How that work manifests itself can vary uh, to a great degree, and some of it depends on the size of our communities, the size of our libraries, the resources that we have. 
um, but they do vary. And, and as this resolution says, it's the role of the state library then to assist those organizations to help ensure that to the best of our abilities we are providing sufficient library services. Um, so again, this is a, an open public comment period for the commission to hear from the library community uh, whether or not uh, this resolution sufficiently states what we mean by a value proposition uh, that is really intended to articulate why and how libraries might help to ensure sufficient library uh, sufficient library services for all Montanans. And then from there, once it's articulated, again, we can use this resolution as a benchmark to really help us evaluate what barriers and challenges exist around the state that the State Library, in partnership with all of you, might work to resolve. Uh, we think that this will be an opportunity for us to benchmark technology services that can help to create that useful information infrastructure or uh, in, in what some people refer to as a statewide library card and we can have a really meaningful conversation about what that means and what that looks like in today's modern library services. We think it can help inform the human aspect of Montana Library Services uh, from how we set our policies as libraries to serve our constituents to how we engage as community leaders. Uh, and Tracy and I have recently been talking about how we might use this value proposition and, and the benchmark it sets as, as a way to inform an update to Montana's public library standards. It's a little bit early to talk about that in any kind of detail, but we know we're due for an update to those standards to reflect more 21st century library services. And we think that uh, it's probably appropriate that those standards might also then reflect a final version of this resolution as well. Um, so we're going to be talking about this resolution at the various federation meetings over the next couple of months. And then the State Library Commission will hold a couple of meetings at the Library Association Conference. Their regular April commission meeting is Wednesday, April 10th in the morning there at the hotel where the conference is being held here in Helena. And then the next morning, on Thursday morning, will be the Conversations with Commission session of the conference. And this resolution will be discussed again at the Commission meeting, but in more depth at that Conversations with Commission. So I encourage all of you to attend one or both of those meetings so that you can share your feedback about this resolution with the Commission. Again, we'll be talking about it at Federation meetings, so if you have an opportunity to, to attend one of those, uh, we'd welcome your feedback then. Or just pick up the phone and give us a call or send us an email. Uh, you know, this is, it's no easy undertaking to try to articulate, uh, as what I said, a, a shared value proposition. Um, so we, we want to take the time to, to really collect your meaningful input ahead of then trying to put some of these values into action. And Jenny, I just want to add in that the Library Commission meetings are um, available to participate in online, so you don't have to be in Helena for that meeting to participate in it. Thanks, Joe. Good reminder, all of our agendas have the login information for those meetings, and we do welcome public participation online as well. And you can find that um, on Aspen events the events calendar, you can find a link to information about the commission meetings and how to join, or you can go to our website and click on the about um, section and find commissions and kind of navigate your way through so two different ways to access that information. But I can think of, there are probably more, but you bet. That's two. So at this point, of course, I, I'm sort of dropping this on you, and, and most of you probably haven't had a chance to look at it. If you have any initial thoughts, please do let me know. Uh, I hope you'll take the time to read and think about 
the resolution, maybe talk about it with your library boards, think about uh, what it means for you and your libraries and your library service, and share your thoughts and feedback with us. I anticipate that the Commission will act on this resolution at their June Commission meeting. So there is plenty of time to give it a lot of uh, really thoughtful consideration uh, so that uh, I know our Commission is, is anxious to make sure that this is something that reflects uh, the thoughts of the library community. I mentioned that our commission is going to be meeting at MLA, so that's always a really, really great time to come and, and uh, participate in and learn a little bit more about the work of the State Library Commission, find out a little bit more about how they operate. So I encourage you to do that. The State Library will also have a booth at the Library Association Conference. One of the things we always like to do with our booth is to have a little area where we can sit down with people and have uh, conversations. So I encourage you to, to come and sit and, and visit with us and learn a little bit more about the work that we do at the State Library. And we certainly want to learn more about how we can support library development in the state. And then finally, uh, you'll be seeing many of us at those Federation meetings starting this weekend and going through May. Uh, Tracy and myself and the consultants and I know Amelia and maybe a few others of us will be attending those meetings. So we look forward to seeing you and your board members at those meetings. All right, that's all I had. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have or anything else you might want to discuss. Or Tracy or Joe, anything that you guys want to add? I know, Joe, you're going to add, talk about the census flyer here a minute. In a minute, yes. Okay. So nothing else to add. Looks like there isn't anything in the chat box. Got a few people that need to leave a little bit early. That's perfectly fine. So what I do have to share with you just finally today is uh, this information, um, a little bit of information, just kind of a heads up about the upcoming, uh, what do you, how do you, how do you say that? The diennial? It's diennial, isn't it? Census, every 10 years. That's a good word. <laughs> the the uh, federal census and a couple of changes that are coming and feel free to jump in here, Jenny. Yeah. I think that librarians need to know about. We're going to be doing a lot more training on this and, and information in the fall as we get closer to next spring. Just about this time we will be in the middle of the census. We will be. So we are going to, we do have some flyers that we're distributing at Federation meetings, we'll have a few at at the uh, MLA booth as well, just to kind of give librarians a heads up so they can take it back to their staff and get people thinking about how the library will support a complete count. Uh, very important in Montana, as you know, um, we, we, uh, we there's always the chance of, that we might get pick up a, le a legislative seat, a congressional seat. Um, no guarantees, of course, but Mm -hmm. Getting a complete count is really important nonetheless because it indicates um, it, that's the number by which federal funding comes into our state and we know that's really important. So the yep. big change is, and Jenny jump in here if you if you have anything else to add, the big change is that most people will not be completing a paper form this year and they won't have anybody knocking on their door to complete their census form as you may have gotten used to in the past. Uh, most people are going to get a notice in the mail and then they are going to go online or go use their phone to uh, complete their census form by voice or online electronically. And so we think, um, and that's just not, not just me and Jenny, uh, the entire census community thinks that a lot of people who don't have access to internet at home may be undercounted. and it would be really nice if their library is, is available to them and they know that they can go to the library to complete their census form. 
That's exactly right, Joe. And so we're working really hard to make sure that libraries are aware ahead of time that uh, you might see an uptick in people using the library for uh, completing the census so that you can be prepared. Uh, there uh, certainly will be need for public access computers and broadband access to do this. Uh, one thing that we're not anticipating that libraries will need to uh, know or to be able to provide is information about the, the completing the census itself, um, but making sure that you have information about where people go online to complete the census and that kind of thing. Um, there's uh, an effort underway through the American Library Association to help um, specifically through libraries have uh, assistance centers in areas that are considered um, hard to count areas. Uh, there are places around the country where they've had low census collection in the past that are considered hard to count. And um, uh, most of those hard to count areas have a library within about five miles. Uh, of course, uh, in, in places like Montana, it's a little bit more remote than that. But um, census, the census office is proposing to have these assistance centers in those areas. And the American Library Association is working with the census to encourage those assistance centers to uh, be housed in libraries. So that's something that you might be hearing a little bit more about. Um, in addition to just making you aware that this is coming, what I also want to encourage you to do is to talk to your local officials because every county in the state will be looking at how they can promote the census and especially some of our larger cities might also have their own complete count committees. So those are groups of people that are actively working to promote the census in your communities. So I encourage you to re reach out and find out what you can do to support your local communities as well. As Joe said, you know, getting a complete count for the state uh, is really, really essential for funding. It's estimated that the state of Montana over the, the decade gets $20,000 per person in federal funds. And then uh, very importantly, Montana's per capita state aid that I mentioned earlier is actually tied to the census. Uh, the amount of state aid that's distributed is, is 40 cents per capita. So an increase in the census will automatically create an increase in per capita state aid. So really, really good incentive for libraries to ensure that their communities are well counted. So just to, to recap, the important thing to know right now is this is coming. There, there is a big change in how the, the numbers are being collected that very likely will impact your library, that you need to know about it. And so we are asking you to think about getting just appointing someone on your staff. We're calling them a census champion. It's just our term. And it's just someone who pays attention to this over the next few months. And um, there will be training available from ALA and certainly from us as well. Uh, we're working with the state complete count committee. Jenny sits on that committee. And we are um, be, we will be planning some training for you all. And, and it isn't that you sit down with someone and assist them to to complete their form, it's it's that you just know where they can go, and where they can go for help if they do have questions. And the other the other thing they need to know right now, Jenny, is that these complete count committees are forming in their in their counties, and so they should, if they if they want a seat at that table, they should stand up and call somebody and uh, call your county commission and ask to sit on that committee. Yep. Now's the time to do that. That, I think, concludes our agenda for the day. Yes, ma'am. So any other questions or any, any suggestions? Uh, I This is Nancy with Wedsworth, and I have had several people of my board ask, will Lauren be replaced, or are we depending upon the other employees of the state? Well, and I'll let Tracy, I mean, if that's okay, Jenny, I'll let Tracy answer that. And just for 
those of you who may not know who Lauren uh, Lauren is one of was one of our three consulting librarians, and she just recently retired. And so Jenny, or Jenny Tracy, I'll let you take it from there. Hi, Nancy. So at, at this time, the plan is to replace Lauren. Um, as I kind of informed others, we just had to uh, leave the position vacant for a little bit. Uh, due to Lauren having retired, we had to pay out those kind of benefits, and so we needed to leave it vacant. So it's probably not going to be replaced, though, until the end of the legislative session. And you are welcome to contact myself or Pam or Suzanne if you have any questions. No, it was just I told them I was sure she was going to be replaced. Mm -hmm. it, I'm I'm just kind of carrying the intermittent sure. question. <laughs> no, actually, when you said that, I realized I should have given a quick update for Pathfinder and Tamarack Federation. So I will. I will do that, just as a reminder, because it has been long enough. Any other questions, comments, suggestions? Well, we'll look forward to seeing you around the state over the next several weeks. We will not be doing a website chat in April, because we will be at the Montana Library Association meeting. For, and, and there are two meetings there in our booth, so you're welcome to come and chat with us there. Well, otherwise, we'll, we expect to see you in May, so we'll we'll uh, we'll get that scheduled pretty soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.